Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans Tours uh, and Investment Conference Call. And today's date is September 24th, 2023. And uh, we're here to talk about all the list of journeys that we have on our website at Africa for the Africans dot org for our schedule between 2023 to 2025 and this is a list of several different uh, countries so we're going to go through the uh, details and do some uh, screen sharing and also i'll uh, play a few videos and share a few information that way anyone that's uh, interested in what we're doing or anyone that's traveling with us is always clear so we'll always have these sessions open to where we can just connect with uh, those who are looking to travel with us and those who have interest in general so this is our 17th year doing our Africa for the Africans tours. We started in 2006, and this is coming up on, uh, we just came back from our 23rd uh, Ghana journey. We've done over 30 of these journeys, and uh, it's most of what you see is Ghana, but other countries have been mixed in, um, and some new countries that we have on the list that we haven't been to. So uh, the goal is, uh, was always to build a foundation and just uh, expand from there. So that's where you see different countries. And as time go along, the goal is always to record more documentation in all of the new countries, especially countries like Egypt, which we have been to before, but uh, the documentation is almost 20 years old. And then uh, Liberia, where we have presentations, but not enough physical documentation in the country. So those countries, um, we're looking to this, do a whole array of uh, documentation from short clips, short films, to this uh, short documentation or documentaries to this uh, putting out this elements of our experience. Uh, so that's what our goal is. Uh, and the goal is to keep about five to seven different countries on the schedule. Uh, a lot of times you love to do more, but uh, you're limited based on many different things. You know, people do reach out and say, hey, uh, you should come to this country. And the last time I added uh, you know, countries along, it was Rwanda, Liberia, and Egypt. And as far as far as Rwanda, that didn't work out uh, at all. Uh, but you know, sometimes you have to go back and change the dates and do a few things. So we'll see how that work uh, in the future. But for right now, uh, the energy for Egypt and Liberia has been strong. Uh, so you don't always uh, win win all these uh, new countries over. But the fact that uh, we have partnership uh, in Liberia and uh, Egypt. Uh, that's um, as you know, is a great uh, setup to where we can leverage ourselves and put more time into building a group, than uh, you know, looking to recruit people that we uh, you know, we you know, we can uh, eventually trust. So we already have those people in place. So that's the beautiful thing about those two next ventures uh, coming up. So we're going to get into the full schedule and go more into certain things. But what I want to start off with is a short film, and it's the last film that I created, um, and that is the. Uh, the featured film on my YouTube channel. Uh, so it's about three and a half minutes and it shows all of the uh, previous tour photos along with this um, an audio uh, talking about our mission and vision with Africa for the Africans. So uh, it's a presentation and I'm always looking just to create more presentation. Yeah. All right, so this is the screen sharing setup for our website, africaforafricans.org. And also, once you're on our website, you can scroll down and the schedule is always right here. It's a lot to click and go to as far as all the schedules. So if you're traveling with us, I'm always recommending that you click on the tour of your interest and read all of the tour files, uh, tour overview, general terms, itinerary, visa information if that's there, language translation and preparation details, which is what we're gonna go through uh, when we just go to our website information. And the main menu is long, but it's, uh, it's all supporting documentation. And once you scroll down, you see more links for YouTube, Facebook, and so on. But once you click on the uh, YouTube link, it will take you It'll take you to our YouTube page and it's a whole list of uh, videos. I'm, I'm going to play the, uh, the last video I uploaded, which is this uh, featured video, Bomani Time, but Mission and Vision. Uh, 
and then you'll see um about 15 uh, videos of the African Holocaust Dungeon Cape Coast. Now, these are a lot of short videos, but in order to tell certain stories, you don't want to mix it in with other stories. So we just base things on different segments uh, a lot of times when we record. And yes, we can easily put together a one hour document documentary, but unfortunate thing about it, when you're into deep history and you're just doing Roots and Kota tour, you'll miss, uh, you'll cut out so much to where, you know, you're limited on what you can show. So the goal is always just to do multiple documentation and, and uh, including a presentation where we show some of the clips. Now, once you uh, scroll down, you see the multiple playlists. Now, these are all of the journeys that we have done in the last uh, year or two. And then the one that we have coming up, the feature journey, Liberia, that's 30 videos, but that's not videos with us in Liberia. We do have some videos where we're showing highlights in Liberia, but what it's more of is presentation and education as far as our mission, vision, and what we're looking to build and now we're looking to approach and then interviews with people that we're working with. So I have a whole list of people that we're building the energy with. So that's the next uh, featured country that we're building up on and it's trying to keep the energy strong in West Africa from Ghana to Liberia. Scroll down some more, some more, you know, Tanzania, Senegal, Gambia, and uh, Ghana highlights. This is the uh, Black Star highlights for those who are interested in our Pan-African community. And this uh, list, uh, is of 130 plus videos. So it takes you back to the you know the beginning of the four years and you'll see this what we've been building as far as clearing a jungle of land and just putting things in place to building a community little by little. So these are all things that we're learning. So as we're learning, we're sharing and then we're just looking to see, you know, looking to see where we are as far as this our growth and development. And more playlists, and the Ghana playlist takes you back to 2017. So uh, after a while, you figure out the best thing to do is create playlists. Then we have some older playlists, South Africa, Brazil, Ethiopia, Egypt, and a classic list of slideshows with uh, audio, um, mainly a, a music presentation and a whole lot of photos. And all of the interviews and things like that that we have a conference call is on this list. So you'll see just a whole lot of lists going back for 10 strong years. And uh, that's our way to share information. So you can keep on scrolling down and you'll see the other uh, playlists. Uh, so that's the uh, only way I can really showcase the 3,900 videos that we have. And we'll be close to 4,000 in the next few months once I get some more of these videos uploaded. Uh, but this is the best platform I've found to just share everything that we have done in Africa. And so this is the featured film that we have on the YouTube page. So once you click on the YouTube page, this is what will play, whether you're a new subscriber or your person is a previous uh, subscriber. It's just uh, something that's looking to build, just like a change the, the photos on the banner. Uh, that's trying to push these things out more as a way to share our vision across Africa. And then before I play that film, let me just put you back to the main page. Before I play that film, let me just make sure everything is set up. And while I'm playing it, if uh, you can't hear the audio or something strange happened, definitely uh, let me know. All right, so it looked like uh, everything is on. Have you ever pondered what it would be like to invest in the heart of the world, Africa? Today, we delve into the journey of a man who dared to dream, dared to venture, and dared to invest in the vast and vibrant continent. Meet Bumani Tienhimba, the driving force behind Africa for the African stores and investments. Picture this, a young boy born in Kingston, Jamaica, and raised in the bustling boroughs of New York City. Despite the concrete jungle, Bomani was always drawn to the rich heritage of his ancestors, the pulsating rhythm of Africa. His curiosity sparked a passion, a passion that would lead him to establish Africa for the Africans' tours and investments. Bomani's journey wasn't a straight path, nor was it an easy one. He faced numerous challenges, both personal and professional. Yet, 
His unwavering resolve and staunch belief in the potential of Africa saw him through. He understood that Africa was not just a destination. It was an opportunity, a chance to build, grow, and contribute to the continent's ever-evolving narrative. Africa for the Africans' tours and investments was born out of Bomani's desire to bridge the gap between Africa and the African diaspora. He wanted to create a platform that would enable people of African descent to explore their roots, understand their heritage, and most importantly, invest in their ancestral land. Through his organization, Bomani has been able to facilitate a variety of investment opportunities in Africa. From real estate to agriculture, from technology to tourism, Bomani has strived to showcase the vast potential that lies within the continent. He believes in the power of investment, not just as a means to generate wealth, but as a tool for sustainable development and economic empowerment. Bomani's work transcends the realm of business. He is a cultural ambassador, a bridge between continents, a beacon of hope for those seeking to reconnect with their roots. His tours are not just about sightseeing, they are journeys of discovery, of understanding, of connection. So what can we glean from Bomani Tayahimba's journey? First, passion is a powerful driver. It was Bomani's passion for Africa that led him to establish his organization. Second, investment is not just about money. It's about contributing to the growth and development of a community, a country, a continent. And lastly, connecting with one's roots can be a transformative experience, one that can inspire, empower, and ignite a sense of belonging. In the end, Bomani Tiahimba's story is a testament to the power of passion, perseverance, and purpose. It's a story about dreaming big, taking risks, and making a difference. It's a story that reminds us that investing in Africa is not just about financial gain. It's about cultural enrichment, economic empowerment, and sustainable development. To sum up, Bomani Taihimba's journey is a shining example of how one man's passion can create a ripple effect, impacting not just his life, but the lives of countless others. Through Africa for the Africans' tours and investments, Bomani has been able to connect people with their roots, facilitate investment opportunities, and contribute to the growth and development of Africa. All right, so family, that is a featured video. So just sharing some history of our energy, of this uh, building of energy in Africa over the last uh, 17 years. So hopefully everyone uh, liked the uh, information and uh, enjoy those uh, realistic uh, group photos that we've been taking uh, from uh, 2006. And so I'm going to do a quick stop. Does anyone have any questions about the video I just played? Any feedback? Uh, All right, so if you do, uh, you have to uh, unmute yourself. All right, so let me uh, continue uh, with some more screen sharing. Why are so many businesses using Snapchat ads? All right, so that is clear. All right, so family, next thing I have is uh, the uh, Facebook page. So for those who wanna know what we do with all the, the photos that we take, uh, I put the best ones that we have on our uh, Instagram and in general, put the majority of them on Facebook. All right, so this is my general Facebook page. Um, uh, for those who ever wanted this send friend requests, I do my best to look out for them and add. But beyond that, what I've done is I set the page up to where I uh, don't have to 
your friend to access any of the uh, documentation. I try to make sure that whatever wherever we have documentation, it's accessible to a public audience of people. As far as signing in on Facebook, it's it's what it is. You have to sign into all of these uh, things nowadays, even uh, YouTube. So once you're on the um, Facebook uh, page, which is facebook.com forward slash Bomani, you can just click on photos. And then you'll see photos of you, your photos. But what you want to do is uh, click on albums. All right, and my goal is always to upload more and more of uh, these uh, photos. I do much better with the uh, videos. But uh, over the period of time, all the photos, are the best ones anyway, are in these uh, playlists. And these are multiple playlists. And as time go along, we usually take a lot more photos than we have taken in the past. Uh, so little by little, let's keep on uploading them. So you'll see all of the previous uh, journeys that we have taken recently. Uh, Ghana, May and June 2023. Senegal and Gambia, April 2023. Ghana, December to January 2022 to 2023. Tanzania, November 2022. And then you just scroll back, uh, you see all of the... Um, other countries, and once you click on the um, any of the uh, photo gallery, it could be anywhere from a hundred to three hundred photos. And what you're looking at is from the first gallery all the way to the end, is just showcasing just us moving around, whether from the airport, like you see a lot of shots where we just here at the Atlanta airport, and you know we just work our way. Just every once in a while, you just take a few photos, take a few videos, and you know. I'm always encouraging people when they're doing these things, just be consistent. Uh, sometimes you just, it's hard to do these things, but by the time you finish doing this for 10 straight days, this is the documentation that you have and you can share it. You can just also go back and, you know, enjoy the uh, highlights, especially with the videos that we have on YouTube. It just, you know, some are much better than others, but it's a full uh, documentation experience. Uh, so it's always great to share with friends and family. And then this will just honestly just go all the way down, just like the uh, photo gallery on or the, the group photos on the uh, website. Uh, it just goes all the way down to 2006. So that is all of our great memories and our growth as um, everything that we've ever built is just literally from the foundation up, from nothing up. So it's just coming up with concepts, ideas, and just working towards it. And it's the same for all the business that we have. This is Bomani Technology. Another one is uh, Black Star Pan-African Community. So that's uh, the age and energy where we are at this moment, looking to you know, build our own Black empire with um, you know, some of the people who want to do business and want to connect with us. So you'll see some people regular faces and energy, whether we're doing live shows or whether we're just in the country or whether we're moving around. And that's the energy of the people who have survived this uh, movement of working with us. You know, many have showed up and you know, it's not everyone is meant to stand the test of time on trying to you know, build an energy to where you keep a consistent flow of energy from Africa to America and back and trying to expand on how we can get things done in the country and build what we talk about on our YouTube live shows, building a global black business pipeline. It's just many aspects of it and many things to figure out. And so while the African continent is not perfect and a lot of things are not set up as we're used to, it creates opportunities where we can just get into. And uh, not everyone is ready for these opportunities. So we recommend people stick together, work together with the energy of people that's uh, doing some of these things. And we just, you know, we can pull it off. Um, but yeah, so, and, you know, some of these are the conversations that we get into when we do live shows and we do interviews at this presentation. But that is uh, the Facebook page and also got lots of our group uh, Facebook page for each of the different countries you travel to. Now, this is the uh, Instagram page. So I'll just scroll down and show, show you a few uh, photos. You can always uh, check it out at Instagram.com forward slash Bomani 2015. So it's a mix of um, this, all aspects of photos that we have taken and, and things that we're involved in, but it's uh, doing the community development where you see houses going up and you see overview of the land and short uh, videos to, you know, one of our last uh, live shows, um, the thumbnail, and then 
always trying to make sure that we just have lots of photos with our Africa for African shirts, all the different colors that we have. And this, this showcase the energy. So that's a shirt that I have on right here. This is from Tanzania, November 2022. That's my good brother, Juma, a real good patriotic energy brother that's uh, always trying to support energy of us, this building the energy in Africa. And tourism is a powerful tool and a powerful way to this build a foundation. And that's how we got into real estate development and you know community development uh, in general. Because while you're doing these things, you're learning, you're processing, and you're just building the energy. Uh, so try not to make, you know, show this one set of photos. So as you go through it, you see all aspects of life. You know? And at some point, you see this lots of beautiful nightlife. And in some parts, you see this us on the beaches, us from in swimwear, just us on boats, enjoying it, and then us at business conference, us networking, and so on. And also lots of great dining. So you'll see lots of those wonderful, incredible plates. And try to mix them in with all the different countries. So the last set of countries you see more of any, than anything else is Senegal, Gambia, Ghana, and uh, Tanzania. But then you scroll down some more, you see uh, South Africa, Ethiopia, Brazil, Togo, Benin. Showcasing the beautiful culture, energy, and you'll see a lot of red, black, green, and gold. All right, so I'm gonna switch back over to our website and you can, uh, it's a uh, long, uh, stream down. Uh, these are the la these are some of the photos that we showed from our land development and in the town. Uh, so literally just uh, trying to show you a balanced experience of our connection in Africa. Uh, and hopefully, when people look at this, they don't all just only just think of this. Um, all the beautiful ladies or the beautiful photos of people on there. It's uh just giving you a balanced flow and feel. And then as time go along, when you look at this, uh, like the community, all of these houses are completed. And, you know, as time go along, you see more growth. You know, swimwear, I always recommend you bring your swimwear. You know, we're on boats, we have a uh, swimming pool. Uh, you know, in Tanzania, we're on Zanzibar Island, so you're right there in uh, Kenwa Beach, an incredible beach, and make, make it feel like it's somewhere in the tropical Caribbean. Uh, incredible nightlife, so dress up, look nice, smile, enjoy the time. You know, some of our New Year's Eve and New Year's Day are parties in uh, Ghana. And this time around, we'll be in South Africa. So look into this, uh, do more of these um, photos in this. As you can see, it's just us as a people, all different ages of us, and just enjoying life. And that's Bomani Dakari, which is a big man now. So all good times, our family. It's been a great journey. I'm looking forward to this, you know, for those who are looking to travel with us to come out and just enjoy yourself and just make the best of your investment, your journey, your getaway, your vacation. Old naval pictures. And jet ski, jet ski out there in Senegal and Gambia. So it's a long reel, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, show the highlights and you know, it's been looking forward to this, actually putting some more uh, photos on there and just like uh, YouTube, looking to put some more videos on there. But uh, back to our website, africafortafricans.org. So once you're on our website, um, all the things I've shared with you, these are the links on there. And uh, this is all of the group photos from the uh, my mission and vision film that I showed. Uh, so when you look on the left side of uh, the page, you also um, have access to uh, the previous uh, tour books. And you can order one of those investment guides. That's my IT website and a few of my other partners and people who are connect and network with that's uh, their website and things that they're doing as we're working together.
And so I'm going to scroll back up. And since we're heading to Tanzania, I'm going to click on the Tanzania link and then we're going to go to the preparation details. But these are all of the list of countries that we have on our schedule. Now, Tanzania, November 16th to the 27th. Uh, which is our fourth journey of a lifetime, South Africa, December 24th to January 4th, which is our second journey of a lifetime, and my fourth time to South Africa. And our Liberia will be a fresh energy, a fresh investment, and a fresh connection. So we're always looking forward to one of those our journeys. Uh, so that's our March 29th to April 9th. Then we're going to visit uh, Ghana for the 24th uh, time, and this is our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, July 11th to the 23rd. Looking forward to showing everyone all the progress that uh, we'd have made on our land coming up on the fifth year and then have another dynamic business and, business and investment conference. And outside of that, it's all an incredible tour. Just like in library, outside of the business and co business investment conference, it's just an incredible tour with a lot of um, great dining, nightlife, and a lot of networking. And as we close out towards uh, 2024. So we have Egypt, Wooten Culture Tour, that's November 21st to December 2nd. Then uh, South Africa again, December 24th to January 4th. And uh, that's uh, the end of the year to the beginning of the year. And then we're going to set off 2025 with Senegal and the Gambia based on those who may still be interested. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, the 2025 schedule, those are all up for those are all up for this uh, debate based on this, the flow and the interest. But uh, what we have said for 2023 and 2024, that's our journeys. Those are our goal. We have a nice energy and flow of people that are looking to journey with us. So for those who are not uh, traveling with us, um, we're going to be just sharing as much video highlights as best as possible on all of the uh, networks that we have, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, our website, and then just generally around on the internet. So let me click on Tanzania journey for. Uh... Right, so once you click on the link for Tanzania, you have the general terms, the overview, itinerary, visa information, uh, English to key Swahili language translation, which is very helpful. That's a nice little program I put together, which I also have it in the tour book, which will be printed and a digital copy will be created. Improving your immune system, always just recommend that we get ourselves nice and strong and ready so we can have maximum energy to enjoy these nine to 10 day full itinerary. So departure reminder list is like a summary of everything that we've talked about and that's what we're gonna get into. Now the visa, the visa information, I'm always telling everyone, if you're doing visas with me, I'll always make it simple. I'll create a visa email and you, you, know, you open it up, print it out, read the details and then uh, you shouldn't have any issues, but if you do, reach out to me and I can provide you with technical and business support and assist you, whether it's remotely, over the phone, or just uh, other ways to work things out for you. But you need to send me something so I can edit or work it out. So those are the things that we uh, that comes with our journey. Um, uh, we're here to help you uh, to make sure that you're clear and you can get everything that you need to get so you can enjoy your journey. All right, so once you click on the link, just scroll down and this is the details. So it's a one to 30 point list. I'll go through as much of it per verbatim as possible. All right, so let me just um, make this a little wider and hopefully everyone can see it. Uh, nice and clear. So departure reminder list of everything that you need to know for traveling. So this list is 100% relevant to every single other country that we're traveling to, um, including South Africa, Liberia, Ghana, Egypt, Senegal, and Gambia, and so on. Uh, the difference of things you know, we'll talk about and explain, uh, but for the most part, it's uh, the same general flow, right? So the main thing I'm always telling everyone is that all of the documentation that you're looking to process, looking to, you need to review, uh, whether you, you know, you have interest, whether you're traveling with us, uh, any of those situations, you have access to a full tour overview, itinerary, general terms, what to pack, um, 
departure of minor lessons, which is what we're looking at. Uh, so, and then, as I mentioned, all of the documentation as far as uh, videos, photos, uh, so you can see us in the real life of what we do. So you have a practical energy of you know, what we're doing. Right. Uh, so that uh, those links are right there on the main menu or right there on the front page of the website. As far as gratuities, uh, for every tour, it's $100 per person. And that uh, takes care of all of the uh, movement as far as um, everyone that's assisting and helping us. So once we get to the country, that's uh, when we collect it. And uh, that's usually just converted so we can just work it out. So it covers... Um, all of the people that's basically going to be assisting us and working with us for the duration of the journey. And so, and group tips is what we use to this, uh, work those things out. So beyond group tips, if you want to tip anyone and things like that, that's all up to you. All right. So that's uh, one and two. Uh, number three, uh, when you uh, come and visit and travel with us to this, any parts of Africa, uh, we just want, we don't want you to be disappointed and unnecessarily frustrated. So we just recommend that you come with open eyes and open mind knowing that the different countries that we're uh, traveling to and doing tours in are developing nations and uh, there is much to do and there is much you can contribute to. Uh, so just keep in mind that uh, all the countries that we have on our schedule is not America or Europe, nor do we want it to be. So you have a experience to just connect with Africa as how Africa is. And if you want to be a part of the future, hey, those opportunities are there for you. If you just feel like hey, it's not for you and you just want to come back and enjoy uh, the American life, uh, you know, it's all good. Only thing that we'll ever say is thank you for this joining us and experiencing Africa and being a part of us supporting black owned business and us building the energy with, uh, you know, with, with people uh, just like us as a people. Uh, like minds, similar minds, uh, people who are looking to, you know, build something out of uh, whatever oppressive state that uh, we're in or whatever situation to, you know, to where we can build, to where we have something versus always being the consumers and being the people who are just the workers and the laborers of society. Uh, so it's uh, one of those opportunities uh, for those who see it that way and open to it that way. Other than that, um, these journeys are beautiful to wake and just enjoy a great energy in Africa. And uh, if you have people that's interested in connecting with us and working with us, the goal is just to keep on building. Um, we didn't start building what we're building just to just last and stand a few years. And we do understand business is difficult and uh, you have to be innovative to stand the test of time because, you know, we've seen many come and many go. And then when you're doing these things, uh, you have other people just copying what you're doing and whether they're working it the right way or the wrong way, uh, that's what you're doing. So you have to also be ready for those things. So just proud to say that we you know here 17 years strong. Next year will be 18 years and we just keep on growing, building. And the goal is to build more partnership and build more network. Okay. Uh, number four, uh, most of the uh, flight bookings that we have, uh, with the exception, I want to say, of uh, Tanzania, not Tanzania, Egypt and Liberia. Um, their group bookings is um, outside of our Delta Airlines. Uh, but most for the most part, almost all of the groups that we have that's what I do, uh, Delta Airlines group booking. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm glad we're able to get back into it to where we have bigger interests of people more into this getting started early versus the last few years when a lot of things had to be last-minute decisions because we didn't know if planes were still going to fly off another outbreak or another pandemic or whatever the situation was going to happen. So now we're just trying to plan more ahead of time. So we've been able to build our group energy for our next uh, set of journeys uh, which uh, for next year, which is Liberia and Ghana and working towards Egypt. And then we already have our flight situation organized for our current journeys. And our goal will always be to where we clear uh, group tickets or clear tickets in general, no later than uh, three months. A lot of times the goal is to try to do them a little earlier. That way we can just focus on other things because as time goes along, you just try to get as many things done within two to four months as best as possible and then you just close out on whatever else needs to close out the last two months and then just get yourself prepared and organized and so that's how we've been able to pull it off uh, over the last 17 years and the big difference in the first 10 years it was this one journey and then now it's a uh, three to four journey and some cases more people uh, but that's what we do as uh, you know, as far as building the energy to get you ready get you connected to Africa and so for those who have the Delta uh, SkyMiles, uh, once you get your ticket information, you log in your SkyMiles, it will be in the system. 
and you just get yourself prepared. And that's also the link uh, for KLM. All right, so from there on, uh, five and six, let's make sure you have all of your travel documentation organized, ready, put them in a secure envelope with your, you know, your backpack and so on, and just uh, be ready. Make sure you get to the airport anywhere minimum two to three hours, recommended three to four hours ahead of time. Uh, so you are ready to go and you can just take your time and just have a stress-free uh, check-in and you're not rushing and things like that. So um, that's the good thing about getting all those things out ahead of time uh, to where the last few days you can just kind of flow in this clothes out and uh, start packing and getting all of the things that you need. So this list is to get you ready ahead of that time. So as we begin to go through some of the list of things, you can start thinking about getting them ahead of time. So we have two months before we go to Tanzania and then three months for South Africa. So give you enough time. All right, uh, eight. Um, uh, both countries that we're going to, this is uh, on our Delta and KLM group book in uh, both uh, Tanzania and South Africa. So you're allowed uh, two check bags, uh, each with a 50 pound uh, limit. So make sure that the bags are secure with locks and name tags. Uh, verify all labeling of your bags directly. So if you're going to Tanzania with us, your final destination will be uh, JRO, which is Kilimanjaro. And if you're going to uh, South Africa with us, your final Destination will be uh, J and B for Johannesburg. So when you're checking your tags, when you're at the counter, just want to make sure that these things are, you know, are in order. Uh, the people that's uh, doing these things are highly trained professionals, so little to to no mistakes are made, but uh, things can happen. So to make to give yourself a peace of mind, you want to make sure you do that. And again, uh, make sure that every single bag that you're traveling with with us on the tour have name tags. Uh, because other people are also traveling with us in uh you know from different countries at some of the hotels and whatever tags that the airline put on your bag what i always recommend is that you leave it on there until you get back to the airport again where they have, they have to take it off because that's also part of your identification as far as if we're just looking for bags or bags are missing or somebody is trying to find us a bag or if a bag was delivered to the wrong room or anything like that so you know so every single bag that i have uh, that we have, and we have a bunch of bags. They're all labeled. You see these yellow tags that say either Bomani uh, Technology or Bomani the or Bomani Time, or just any of our information on there. Uh, so that's one way to this uh, save from losing uh, things because things happen. Uh, so th those are the things that we do and we go through, and that's why we're able to have the level of success and getting you prepared, organized, and ready. Now, if you're looking to bring an extra bag, an extra bag um, is going to be $200 extra bag up to 50 pounds now if you have a, a overweight bag from anywhere from this basically extra one to 20 pounds it's extra 100 dollars. so you can always just get a third bag in this get up to 50 pounds so whichever way you work it it is all good and um, no bags are allowed over 70 pounds and then all if you have liquid this um three ounces or more put them in your check bags if you have any metal uh, whether it's a pick or Anything that looked like uh, someone can give you a hard time and say it's an object, put in your check bags. Save yourself the drama and save yourself the arguing with people who they don't care what you have to say. They're just doing their job and they're just following directions and they don't have a choice but to tell you what you have to tell. They tell you, and if you don't listen, they won't let you proceed. And uh, so that's what I try to do this have a smooth check in and have less stress. And that's what I've been doing over the period of time. So that's what we advise everyone to do. Uh, now the check bags on um on Air Tanzania, so you're allowed one fifty pound check bag. So just want to let everyone know front if you have bags that's over fifty pounds, they're gonna charge you for that for that weight. Uh, so they're gonna put both of your bags together, and then whatever it is, they'll charge you the difference. So that's usually so what we'll always do when we're there, we'll let you know the full details of that, and we always recommend that you bring as much Tanzania shilling up to about at least fifty US dollars worth. And that will pay for it in cash. Uh, you can bring your card. And if the card machine just so happened to work, you're good to go. But if the card machine don't work, you're going to have to go try to find an ATM machine. And good luck on that one. But we always work our game plans uh, in that situation because we don't want anyone to miss a flight or be delayed for a flight because of things like that. So we'll always let you know that the night before you travel, you make sure that uh, we'll take you to the Forex Bureau, take you to the ATM machines and things like that in the city of Arusha. And you have all those things ready to go. Now, as far as uh, the carry-on bags, uh, carry-on bags, uh, small roll-on, 
or a backpack and all these things have to either fit in the bin, uh, the overhead bin or in uh, under the seat in front of you. So those are the standard procedures. And so you'll see me with um, you know, my roll-on carry-on and my backpack. That's why I'm moving in two 50-pound check bags. Uh, everything fits in there and you're just in business. And for those who wanted to um, bring school supplies, I recommend just bring school supplies. And then that's when you get rid of them, you have more space. Uh, so that's what I recommend. Uh, so when you're packing, just uh, remember less is better. But if you put things in your bag that you're going to get rid of, that helps a whole lot. All right, I have a few of these things. Uh, number 11. Um, and this is for, well, this is specifically for Tanzania. Uh, so some of these things have to be rewritten. But we always recommend bring a set of white and a set of uh, red, black, and red, black, green, and gold uh, just to pay homage to the ancestors. And then usually we have on the list uh, the days that, you know, we wear these things in solidarity. And then we also have the Africa for the African T-shirt, which is either white or a combination of red, black, green, and gold or similar to the country's color. Uh, so now we're down to 12. And as I mentioned uh, about the school supplies, uh, these are a list of things that you can bring, bags, books, papers, pencils, calculators, clothing, um, black dolls for the children. I was trying to encourage that we bring things that can connect with the children. So all the children, all the places we go to, the children are black. So just recommend you bring some dolls that look somewhat like them, even if it's one of those dolls where they paint the, the white Barbie doll black and so on. Uh, it's um it's a psychological thing and it does make a difference. Uh, so that's why you see that right there. Uh, but appreciate um all the good energy of what people have done over the years. It's been very impressive, especially in Ghana, of all the things that you know we bring and you know you change the co change the culture of things because these are all recorded videos and then you just inspire and encourage other people to participate. Uh, you know do the best you can do. Basic donations for schools, orphanage, and certain supplies and whatever volunteers that uh, you can send there and things like that. And you just do your best to kind of work some public relations and some building up the energy in the country and just you know, try to connect with those things just like we try to open things up to where we can learn more about business and investments and share, share those things because you never know who is watching and who may be open. All right, uh, 13, um, this is when we talk about the uh, group meetup. So in this case, uh, we're going to meet up at Atlanta Airport for those of us uh, meeting together. But uh, November 17th is when we all meet up in Amsterdam. And if you're traveling to, um, you know, with us to South Africa, we're going to meet up December 24th here in Atlanta, the Atlanta airport. And that's where 100% of our group members will meet up. And it's the same case in Tanzania. So that's what this part of the, um, the preparation list is for, just to give some ideas of meetup times and things like that. So I know sometimes people want to like where we meet, what we do. So this is the list that showcase those things. And then you can also go by your itinerary. And then for those who have different flights scheduled from us, you just have to let me know ahead of time so we can make arrangements and things like that. But uh, we always recommend everyone, if you're traveling with us and you're going to make your own flight arrangement, understand that in some situations, you have to also, if you're going to purchase your own international ticket, you have to also purchase your own domestic ticket. And usually we do a group booking and then we just let you know what the cost of that is and you, you pay that. Uh, but that's one of the things that you have to be clear on. And then also recommend that you get schedules close to what you see on the physical itinerary. Like I was telling one person who claimed that he booked a ticket. And I was like, you know, I know you hear us talking about Zanzibar, but, uh, you know, we're not flying into Zanzibar. The only thing that we're dealing with in Zanzibar is a domestic flight to Zanzibar from Arusha and then ferry boat from Zanzibar to Dar es Salaam. But as far as any international flights, we're not doing it. So these are things that you have to be clear on when you put in dates and you think and book certain things. But as long as you can read our itinerary, um, you won't have any issues with doing that. So if you can work out flights yourself or if you work for the airlines or if you have a credit or so on, all those things can be worked out. We just have to have a conversation. All right, so let me uh, cruise through this list. Uh, bring any necessary um, medicines that uh, you may find, you may need, um, or just find the things that uh, you really need here and ahead of time. That way you're prepared and you're well organized. 15, camera, camcorders, bring extra film or memory card and recharge with batteries. If you have electronics, bring a converter, foreign adapters and an extension cord. Uh, unlike iPhone or Samsung Galaxies, uh, if you just wanna use one of the international mobile SIM cards. So these are all things that we just um, tell you the process, not telling you that you have to do all of these things. 
Uh, but make get make sure you're prepared that way when you get to the country, you can just have a universal uh, adapter where you just plug in the wall and just plug in all your device and you don't have to worry about you know a bunch of drama and things like that. And I always recommend that you get the versions of these things that have USB connections that we can just plug in your USB devices directly also. Uh, 16, uh, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bags, compact uh, umbrella, uh, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. So these are the things that, you know, you start wanting, wondering what do you need to pack and bring. And then when we give you these Africa for Africans backpack, you can pr put your waterproof poncho in there and your um, and then your umbrella. And you can just keep that with you on the bus and when you're moving around and if showers of blessing just start happening, you know, you have your waterproof poncho, you just transform into, into that. And then you have your umbrella and then you're good to go. Uh, so those are things that, you know, I always recommend, especially when you're, you're traveling uh, to Zanzibar Island with us and you go into the world famous Stone Town, which is really a stone town. Uh, but it's weird because as soon as you get to certain parts, it just feel like either we brought the rain with us or it just seemed like it just rained. Uh, but it's a place that rains. And I remember... If, um, one of the tour year, which is our first, uh, you know, it's always a great experience when some of these things happen because you have to film in some of these things and you're seeing all this water going everywhere. But uh, that's why we have those things. Um, whether you're in a rainy season or not in a rainy season, you're in tropical West Africa, you're in a rainforest climate and it can rain at any time. At 17, uh, 17 uh, mosquito spray or repellent, centronella oil, uh, which is an excellent, insect repellent, avoid wearing sweet scented lotions and things like that. You know, most of these sprays have dangerous chemicals and you know, so we recommend do your own research. Uh, 18, a uh, calculator, or you can just use one of those um, converter apps to convert, because uh, I could never keep up with uh, all of these currencies um, and things like that. So last I do remember for one US dollar, you're gonna get uh, 2,000 and about 300 Tanzania shillings. And always recommend that everyone bring big bills, 100s and 50s, uh, because in Tanzania, just like Ghana and some countries, uh, if you have 10, uh, 10s and 20s or less, you're going to get a lower um, conversion de denomination. Money, the sound is choppy. Uh, go ahead. It's choppy. It's chopping up. All right. Uh, let me uh, stop and check my mic. It's pretty clear to me. Yeah, I'm using my high-tech uh, Yeti mic. I just want to make sure that I am good on it because sometimes uh, the mic from the webcam will flip over and turn this back on. We'll turn back over. Yeah, so uh, Akuvi, um, you, you're, sure, you, you're sure your device is working properly? But nevertheless, family, what I'm going to do is go through this list, uh, which is a relevant list for all of the countries that we're going to. And then for those who have questions, we're going to get right into the questions and things like that. So we're almost uh, finished through. Uh, so we're at 19. Uh, it's different variation of how you can uh, do the situation, but I usually recommend bring as much uh, US dollars, as I mentioned, the bigger bills, uh, get you a better conversion rate. And then uh, if you have a Visa card and you like to use the AT machine, we'll get you to one of those locations. And if you have money that needs to be converted, usually we have someone that uh, meet us, whether it's on the bus or at a specific location, or we usually go to the Forex Bureau. And let me just bring up that screen sharing back. All right, so there we go. And in some situations with your bank, you may have to put a travel advisory. And in some situations, you may use your bank card and it works the first time and then the next time it won't work. And you may not get a text message. Uh, in this situation, what you have to do is just call the international number and um, they'll get it worked out for you. So those things are things that you can work out ahead of time if you don't want to have any drama. Uh, so the 20, the weather is going to be just like in, a, in tropical paradise, whether you're in uh, Miami or whether you're in Jamaica. So what we recommend is just to dress comfortable as best as possible. We do have um, evening event like great dining. So you may want to get dressed up, uh, get casual. Uh, we do have nightlife energy. And uh, we do have this sometimes uh, for one or two days, we may be doing a lot of walking. And you just want to make sure that uh, you have good footwear and then you're comfortable as best as possible. 
And then so for the beaches, uh, since we're on Zanzibar Island and we're doing the, um, you know, the sunset cruise, which is one of my favorite. You take one of, you know, one of these nice boats out and you have drumming and nice music and you're there, you know, you just, you know, for those who want to have a nice uh, tropical drink or something, you can bring what you want to bring. And uh, we have snacks on there. We're just cruising along the different islands and cruising along, you know, from Kenwar to Nungui and this uh, enjoying this uh, two to three hours out. And just, you know, so you're out there in the boat, so you're going to get wet. So make sure you bring your swimwear and bring whatever you need to bring. So these are the things that, you know, when we're on the journey and we're talking about preparation for the next day or the next few days, these are also things we would talk about. But uh, when you talk about swimwear and you talk about certain footwear or certain things, these are things you want to get ahead of the time. At 21, um, I just be mindful of the, the photo taken at airports and certain office and government buildings um, and things like that. It's easier to get away with it using your um, using your phone since the phone is just one of those things that, you know, people just let slide by. But if you have a professional camcorder and you're just in the airport and you're doing certain things, um, you know, that may draw some unnecessary attention to you. At 24, this is, um, I meant to change this over. This is supposed to be Alliance Insurance, um, but um, this is just generally talking about traveler insurance. So uh, we do not offer travel insurance. For, so for those who want a policy, we just recommend that uh, you just look for one of the policies out there. So Alliance uh, is one of the ones that come with, uh, that you know, you'll see Delta Airlines and other companies that we deal with uh, you know, they're, they're usually featured that one. So that's why I know about that one. Uh, 23, uh, toiletries, including uh, tissues, soaps, napkins, wet wipes, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towels, and laundry soap. Not saying that you don't have these things there, but in some cases, you may just want to be prepared and just have the things that you need. Uh, 24, uh, uh, different people from the different countries in Africa are very friendly, but however, be wary of people who just want to make quick money off you and make promises they cannot keep. Uh, you should know as much as possible about the people that you're planning on doing business with. So that's why we have business and investment conference to educate, share with people these things and also to connect people to people that you can actually work with and give you a start of this networking. Uh, so, but this is a popular thing. Um, you know, you're going to run into people that's going to sell you, you know, whether it's, um, I don't know, whether it's uh, you know, selling your dream or selling your sweet lies uh, whichever one you may want to just uh, look at it, it is. Uh, but um, I've been there, and other you know, and you tell people it's it's the situation. And um, I just think that's how it goes when you go somewhere and you're not from there. You're gonna run into these characters, and uh, some of them may be a nice fine lady, and some of them may be a nice exquisite gentleman that say that is you know his father is the chief of this empire or whatever he claims to believe in his mind. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, people sell you these things and it will sound believable, you know, and uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of, of things like this that people have literally just fell for. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to work on one of my documentaries and uh, do one of those things. Uh, but unfortunate. Uh, so what we try to do is just be real with everyone and let people know, hey, you want to get away of a lifetime, just enjoy it to the best of your abilities. If you want to do more than that spend an extra you know, a few days or so on in the country and meet with some of the people that, you know, we have working with us, especially if you're impressed with their energy. Usually our, our goal is to always recruit uh, you know, great energy of people and have them work with us to help us, especially since we're not there all the time and people tend to just, in a way, just go back and travel in the different countries. Uh, 25, uh, games for leisure time and social gathering, deck of cards, dominoes, chess, and general board games. So you usually have parts of the journey where, you know, we're going to socialize in the lobby or things like that. And that's one option of things we can do. And, you know, you can enjoy some drinks from the bar and just enjoy a piece of time, you know. So it just depends where we are on the uh, journey. Uh, 26, uh, emergency items, flashlights, basic first aid kits, laxative, Pepto-Bismol, decongestant, anti-diarrhea, things like that. So uh, whether it's probiotics, antibiotics, think about uh, the world that you're getting into where you're not used to the water, you're not used to certain things. So when I, you see Pepto-Bismol and things like that, and also you can always get the best recommendation from your doctor. 
So some of these lists I have here, um, I'm going to update them uh, for all of the countries that we have coming. So, um, but these are the things that I would recommend that everyone just process and make sure that uh, they bring some of these things, especially when you're dealing with uh, possibly one, one of the more popular issues will always be diarrhea. And also, you know, yeah, whether it's mosquitoes and mosquito repellent, these are the things that you want to be prepared with. Uh, 27, uh, one of my favorite, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. This is an experience that would have its ups and downs as a part of your introduction to Africa. We recommend you go with the floor and enjoy time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we have put together on the journey of a lifetime. You know, so I tell people, don't get just don't make yourself miserable. Um, you know, me, my crew, we always run around, and do what we need to do, and you just need to just enjoy what needs to be, enjoy what we have set up. If you have any questions or if you need uh, us to work on something for something's not clear or whatever, you know, you can just always reach out to me. That's the best thing I ever recommend to everyone. Um, the tour guide and other people are not they are more than likely they can't help you. So just talk to the source. I'm here to accommodate you. I'm here to get the people that we have hired to work for you and work with you to make sure that you are accommodated. And uh, we'll go above and beyond to make sure you're taken care. But at the same time, to what I'll tell everyone is that these are developing nations. So yes, your air condition, your hot water, and certain things may not work as efficient as you're used to and things like that. Uh, but don't let those things uh, ruin your experience. Understand this is where we are. And we're in someone else's country and let's uh, try to this. Uh, and work with it. I'm not telling anyone to deal with certain things. So uh, that's why we have maintenance at receptionist. So if something is not working, we get them to fix it or get them to put you in another room and things like that. Uh, so those are some of the things that are realistic. And uh, in some places you go, it's perfect. No one complains about anything. But these are all things that you analyze and you analyze them because um, you know, sometimes we have entitled mind, which is what it is. I'm not here to be upset with anyone for feeling and want uh, what you're paying for and want uh, the services that you're used to. Uh, so that's why we always make sure that we pick the best accommodations and put a unique staff of people together and just try to get them to understand that, uh, stay focused on what we're doing. Uh, so likewise, uh, you know, you may have some people on a the journey, they may be doing their own thing. Some people like nightlife, some people like certain things. I just tell people focus on themselves because next thing you know, you're just paying too much attention to what, someone else is doing and who they're doing it with and what they're doing. And next thing you know, you're not doing what you came to do and enjoy your investment. So those are my, you know, recommendation on those things because uh, I've seen situations. So everything that I will always talk about is part of an experience of just dealing with so many people over that long stretch over the years and seeing so many people just enjoy themselves, have a great time. And I've been able to make the connections they need and put things in place to where when you're there in countries like Ghana, you'll see many people say, I, you know, Bomani connected me uh, to the country and um, made sure that, you know, we had good people around to assist and, or they got kind of connected to the country. And based on the energy and the things that we talked about and laid out, uh, they're able to adapt and connect to the country, right? So 28, uh, let's skip all the COVID stuff. Uh, 20, because uh, uh, all those things are just done with. Uh, so I promise I will update some of these lists, especially before we travel and I'll look at newest travel advisory because some things as time go along, this change. So uh, 29, uh, when you get to Tanzania, uh, the goal is uh, always uh, to just get everyone just to just process themselves in a visa line. And once you get out the visa line uh, to where you're showing your visa, and for those who need visa on arrival, you can just get in the other line and get your visa on arrival. But I always recommend everyone follow the process and get the visa before you travel there. Once we leave our baggage, uh, once we leave the passport control, um, baggage claiming is right there. This is Kilimanjaro Airport, an airport that sounds like it's very big, but it's a very small airport. Uh, so everything is just close and, and close by. So we'll get our bags and then we'll proceed. And then what I usually recommend, since you're there at the airport, uh, just get some local currency, especially if you want to do something later on the night or if you just want to order some food since uh, dinner is closed um, and the first dinner is available the next day. Uh, but you can all, always order room service or whatever at, they have at the uh, hotel. Uh, and then uh, you may just want to make sure you just have some money right away. The next day when we do go out, we'll take you to the Forex Bureau where you can um, you know, convert your money. Uh, so those are some of the things that uh, we just have set up and prepared um, and just want everybody to just be clear. 
And so once everyone is set up clear and ready, um, our guys uh, from Tanzania will be out there uh, just receiving everyone and packing the, uh, the bags up and just welcoming them, everyone to the country. And then when we get on the bus, that's when we start doing the video recording as far as this introductions. We start talking and just try to, uh, you know, our guides will also share some of these stories. And by the time you turn around that one hour drive from uh, from Kilimanjaro Airport to the city of Arusha will be uh, finished. Uh, so family, uh, that's what we have. And uh, 30, the final thing is bring this anything that will help make uh, this moment of connecting to the land of your ancestors special. Whether we go into an African Holocaust dungeon or whether we go into somewhere that um, that represent uh, the struggles of our ancestors, whether you do bring want to bring some candles, whether you want to uh, lay some ashes or any of those things. So those are things that uh, you can do on all of these journeys because we just make it that we always make some aspect of it about us reconnecting to our ancestors. So family, let me just go back up to the top and let me uh, stop our screen sharing. So family, let me open up the uh, call for anyone who have any questions. And only thing I ask is this, um, I'll give you a name, where you're calling from, what journey you're traveling on, and your question. So the line is open family. All you have to do is press unmute. All right, or if someone can give me some feedback on some of the things that we have gone over. I know it's hard to go over like all of these things, for all of these countries, but we'll just kind of work these things out in general presentations for all of the countries. And then when we do specific presentation for the individual countries, tend to go over more of the overview itinerary and get more into details on certain things. But this is a general forum for all of the countries that we're traveling to. So family, uh, unmute yourself and let me know who have any questions. Uh, Clyde, I see that you're unmuted. Hey, it's Wayman Jones. Uh, greetings, uh, Wayman. Welcome to the call. Yeah, yeah me and Carol, Carol here. We're in Atlanta. Question. You mentioned about locking your bags. Can you can you have a lock on your bag when you fly? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, lock your bags and make sure all bags are labeled and things like that. Now, mm -hmm. if uh, TSA or if... Um, Someone need to get into your bags because you have something on there and it's um and they scan certain things. Uh yes, they will uh break the lock and get in there, especially if it's something that possibly is harmful. So that's the uh, the situation as far as okay. what I'm familiar with. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. But if you have anything that you'd like to share about that, um, please uh, share also. Well, I enjoyed Hi. it. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to mention um, air tags. Uh, Apple has air tags that you can put in your luggage. It'll track your luggage wherever you are. And um, and I had one, but um, it wasn't in the luggage that got lost. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that they have air tags at four packs um, from Apple. I so appreciate the uh, recommendation, and that's a family. Um, you can literally just put um, a GPS system or a tracking system on your bag from different, uh, and I guess different uh, people sell those things. Uh, so that's a good option to uh, look into. Uh, anything dealing with your bags, you want to do it. So tags, tracking, and so on. And then also um, when you check your bags in with Delta Airlines, KLM, they do have a, their own tracking system. So that way, that means uh, you could just feel a whole, a, a, you know, you can feel, uh, a peace of mind knowing that you have your own tracking system. They're tracking your stuff and your bags are secure and so on. And um, yeah, so that's the, the best thing I recommend uh, when you're doing these things. Make sure you uh, the sign up for the Sky Miles and just have a, a login. That way things can be connected for you. That way, you know, things could just be organized for you, especially during the busy holiday, uh, December. Right. So family, uh, anyone have any another question? All right, uh, so everyone being shy. Mr. Bowman, say hello to everybody. Turn around, I can't see you. 
that is my my traveling partner right there, Mr. Bomani Dakari. All right. And he's a lot bigger than the last look. But yes, uh, so family, the line is open. Definitely love to hear some feedback from anyone as far as the preparation information, the itinerary, the overview, or just any general questions that you may have about our preparation or about how we do things. Um, questions about the videos, pictures, just anything in general. As a matter of fact, Akuvi, let's hear from you since you're, for the first time your mic is working. <laughs> Good luck with that one. That's, McCoy, what do you want to know? You. Well, yes, uh, you can even introduce yourself and talk about uh, your experience with traveling with uh, us Africa for Africans uh, from traveling to Ghana to Senegal and the Gambia. And so how about that? <laughs> Well, very interesting. And then, and then just let everyone know, you know, um, you, you know, how was that experience and also uh, why you decided to travel with us to Tanzania? Okay, Sister, Sister Kube, New York, um, Ghana experience, where I've been going to Ghana way many, many years ago, so I have a lot of connections there. That's home, Ghana and Togo in particular. And as far as Senegal, I was in Senegal over 20 years ago. Gambia was my first time going to Gambia. Each experience was very, very good. And then I thought, you know, about Tanzania, because, you know, back in the day, you know, I read about, you know, Tanzania. Back in the day, I knew a lot about the country history and Jomo Kenyatta and all that good stuff. And I love history and culture, especially African culture. That's my thing, one of my strengths. So, um, yeah, and I said, um, you know, you're good too. God, and you seem to have it going on and you know because the little Bomani and stuff I thought it'd be very very interested to try the east coast since most of the time I've been on the west coast other than um Egypt because I've been there three times already but um yeah said it'd be interested and I know I'll liven up the place so that's why I decided absolutely you the life of the party um, that's right that's I don't good. go on I don't I do not go on bad trips I may have some bad people around me, but I don't go on bad trips. I have a great time anywhere I go. What else? Hey, yeah, you have the floor. You can share anything you want to share. <laughs> I mean, what are some of the best moments of your journey? I mean, because you you talk about you don't go on bad trips, uh, so you must be a positive person. Because earlier yeah. when I was talking about. Uh, earlier when I was talking about uh, the uh, preparation list, I was explaining to us in general that let's not uh, put ourselves in a situation where we just focus on other people. You know, it's like it's it's kind of like sometimes you feel like you're in high school where you you know you have, you, you know you have a you have a clique and they just want to be the, they just want to draw attention and things like that. Uh, but you know, I don't look at uh, things a certain way. I just try to just make sure everybody's accommodated and try to just get everybody just to understand that. Uh, you know, we have our different missions and things and there's things that we're doing together, but this focus, focus and enjoy it. So, um, yeah, so thank you for being positive on that one, because that's what we have to do. Yes. And, you know, you've been by me a lot, you know, um, groups and stuff, you know, that's fine. You know, but I, I love um, hanging to be around the local people. That's how I, you know, that's how I am. So I'm about the culture and the local people, you know, groups, groups are fine to extent. Well, I'm, you know, more with, you know, the local people, being around the people, learning more about the culture and the language and all these different things. So that's more as far as geared to my personality. I appreciate you, Akubi. Any, uh, anything else you want to share? you have any questions uh, in general? Nothing much. You know, when I have other questions, you know, I'll call you. No problem. But don't let me be the only one talking. Me and you, what happened to everybody else? Everybody else is listening to you. <laughs> All right, so let me um Juma Juma where are you brother you disappeared on us <laughs> Juma knew I was going to call him so he dipped off the call can you hear me Bomani <laughs> Clyde uh, greetings uh, Clyde uh, greetings uh, brother welcome to the call alright thank you yeah um, I'm scheduled to go to uh, South Africa with you um, December 24th Rhonda and I um, really looking forward to that. Uh, just a couple of questions. One is, um, as a group, 
do you have anything planned to bring in the new year? Um, any kind of thing that we can do with the group or, uh, you know, is there a, a club or something that you would recommend? Uh, that's one question. Uh, another one is, um, uh, are we certain that everything will be open since we're going during the holiday season? So Robin Island and, you know, so Mandela House and all that, that, that those should be open irrespective of the fact that it's on, during the holidays, correct? Yeah, uh, South Africa, 100%, uh, yes, uh, as far as uh, everything can be open. South Africa is just a real... Uh, a real tourist uh, country. So uh, when it comes to holidays, um, everything is open because it's, you know, it's uh, where, we, where we're going is Johannesburg and Cape Town. So whether it's uh, Christmas or the New Year's, uh, everything is uh, open as far as what we need to get access to tour sites, um, restaurants, and just a uh, general just uh, moving around. Now, the okay. other question that um, you had regarding uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, yes, yeah, so New Year's Eve, what we have said is to where we go down to the waterfront and then we just uh, socialize and party down to the waterfront. And that's it. Uh, so that is where an entire setup of New Year's activities is. And then we'll be right there, not too far from the waterfront. And then you know, when we're in Johannesburg, um, it's Christmas is not a big deal. It's not a party like that. But you have different things available, especially for those who are not tired and uh, they want to socialize, so right. that's uh, what we have. Uh, but yeah, these um, you know, you kind of pick a country where it's going to be vibrant during this time. So I uh, so usually have Ghana or uh, South Africa for the Christmas New Year's, and it's uh, it has always worked out great. Yeah, uh, that's that sounds great. That's I, I'm I, the the two times I went to Ghana, it was. Um, uh, this last time was the best because it was during uh, uh, their independence um, celebration. So that, that was cool. So to celebrate, you know, uh, New Year's Eve in, uh, in uh, South Africa, man, you can't get more lit than that. Um, but also now, you know, there's currently a, like an energy crisis in South Africa where uh, I think certain times of the day, the power, it, it has to be shut down. Um, any insight on that? Yeah, the unfortunate thing of it, and, you know, you feel bad for uh, the less fortunate people. Um, but um, as far as us, uh, it won't affect us um, because of the hotel situation in the districts that we're in. Uh, unfortunate, um, they're going to keep those places going nonstop, especially Christmas and New Year's. And unfortunately, uh, they need to just not give other people power in the township and stuff. They'll do that. That's the, that's a selfish mindset of just, you know, the powers that be. But when you look at it, they're going to, you know, they're going to base it on their, their, you know, their economics. Right. Uh, the hotel sales and the business districts and the tourism districts and things like that. And they're going to look at, well, let some, people in the township suffer. So if it comes down to that, that's what they usually do is unfortunate. Uh, I've heard about those situations in different countries where, you know, if I'm the president and this is my neighborhood, my neighborhood have consistent power and then we just, you know, make decisions here and there to just give other people power randomly. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunate situation, but yeah, we're definitely good on that. And that's why we plan tourism. But uh, you still feel a way for people though. You know, but right. uh, just want us to really enjoy ourselves and understand that we're in good hands. And you're around mm -hmm. tourism and safety. Right. Well, actually, speaking of safety, uh, I, I keep hearing things about, you know, how much crime is in Joburg and, and Soweto, especially. Um, unfortunately, they... yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it does have its level of violence. And, you know, so you always have, you know, you give uh, safety briefs of people moving. Like if we're moving in the nighttime, I usually tell people, People just like don't disappear off your on your own. Uh, make sure right. you move in a certain way. Uh, but yeah, from carjacking to invasions and things like that, all kind of crazy stuff uh, have gone on. Uh, but that's why I try to keep us in a certain district. But then, then unfortunately, I'm sure it's be a time or two where you're gonna see a bunch of people lined up homeless on the side of the streets and things like that. But uh, I would compare it to 
sim I'll, I'll compare it to the popular cities in the world. Um, you know, whether it's um whether it's uh, Lagos, New York City, uh, whether it's um Atlanta, from the homeless to the, the, the crime, it's just an aspect of city. So what I've also decided to do is just take us a little bit outside the city and put us somewhere a little more tropical. And um with that, um, you know, that would feel a lot better. I did I was disturbed when I did look outside of the hotel and I just saw a whole long street of people just homeless lined up sleeping on the corner. It just threw me yeah. off because the hotel was so nice. So yeah, I got uh, you know another nice option because I want us to be able to look outside of our windows and see certain beauty. But um, right. So that's why even in Ghana uh, we stay in East Ogon in one of the nicest neighborhoods in uh, Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, East Lagoon is <laughs> really nice. Um, and also, how many days uh, would we be wearing like uniformed shirts? Like uh, one it's... day for the uh, tour T-shirts, and maybe another day we'll wear some colors and things like that. But uh, when I put that up there, uh, some countries are more in depth. Where like Tanzania and Ghana, where we just do a few different things. Uh, South Africa, we just wear a tour T-shirt. We'll pick one of the days when we wear it and do some group photos. Okay. As far as uh, South Africa, I should say. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. I'm good. Absolutely. I appreciate your energy. Ready to go, man. All right, man. Absolutely. Well, it's, well, it's coming fast. So you're you're going to look up and that's going to be the time frame. And that's why it's like throughout the whole week, you just got to kind of keep working on so, so many things. Like, you know, right. like, like it's like, it's like a good six to nine month process where you just literally just working on these things. And you know, the people ask how you get it done. I was like, well, you pace yourself from month to month. You don't ever try to kill yourself and think you're going to do all this stuff in two to three months. Right, right. And, and, and the, 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 the weather, the, the I, weather it, it doesn't really get as hot as like Ghana there, right? South, you Africa, say, is go, South Africa is going to be cool, especially when we do the cable cars in uh, Cape Town. I usually always recommend, but I'm sure I'm going to find somebody that decide they don't want to wear a jacket. I tell everyone, <laughs> make sure you bring a sweater and a jacket. And okay. like going up to the mountains uh, and Table Mountains, they're taking, I'm not sure if people are familiar with the cable cars. Mm -hmm. um, we did the same thing in Brazil, but Brazil is a straight tropical. At that time, it wasn't uh, cold. But when you get to South Africa and you get up there, you're going to be cold. We have videos with us all in jackets and things like that. And that's us just looking at the odd person out and wondering, uh, did you not read the memo or you didn't hear our guideline? <laughs> uh, but... Uh -huh. Yeah, and then when you're taking the cable cars up, the cable cars are spinning as they go from um from the base part of base part of the table mountain, and then you're gonna have one part open to where you're gonna feel a cold breeze. Mm -hmm. For those who are looking at that, you can always check out the South Africa videos. I got the cable cars up there, and I feel the videos, and the same thing with our Brazil. It's a incredible adventure. I know some people are, like terrify the heights and things like that, and like what if this happened? I'm always some people like. Just like when we're on the plane, it's what it is. Uh, you're you're dealing with things that are highly safe, sometimes safer than you just being on the uh, the ground driving. Uh, so that's how safe these things are, as far as the checks, um, and the consistent time they do it. You know, even when we're just up doing canopy walks in the jungle somewhere in our Kakum Park in our Ghana, and people are wondering if you know, I was like, well, let's hope you don't fall down there because then something is gonna eat you. But outside of that, you know, it's the thing is not going to collapse. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. That canopy walk is... <laughs> it feels pretty shaky, though. <laughs> and then I, that's why I got to get my son and his friends. I got to let yeah. them go ahead of time because what they do, they're torment people. And then people start, start freaking out. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks again, Bomani. Absolutely. Appreciate your energy. All right. So yes, uh, Sion or um, anyone else have any questions um, before we start uh, working to close out in the next 15 minutes? The well, family, the line is open. Akubi, let me meet you. Uh, Sion, would you like to share your experience on your last uh, journey of a lifetime with us to Ghana? And yes, Bomani, this is Sion from Chicago. Um, it was a, my husband and I first time going and it was a wonderful trip. We did enjoy ourselves, so that's why we decided to go back next year and stay a little longer because it was too short. We didn't get to do as much as we wanted to do. 
um, anybody going, you just make sure that you get a lot of rest because, you know, if it's hot, you're going to feel a little tired, a lot tired and sweaty. But just prepare yourself to just um, get a lot of sleep because I know the overnight flight, you know, you know, for me personally, I just going to sleep. So the next day I, would, I make sure that I get enough, get up early, prepare myself for the day. So, but you guys will have fun wherever you go with Bomani. He's organized, he's on time, he's an on time person. So, just prepare yourself and you'll have fun. Yes, Sian, yeah, appreciate the energy. And I thank you for uh, you know, journey with us and this uh, going with the flow and this uh, enjoying that itinerary and this being clear on that itinerary and being prepared for each of the day-to-day -day events and everything because that's another big thing that we always recommend that uh, you know, everyone take your time and read that itinerary because we obviously realize that most people don't read it, uh, but not to you know, pressure anyone, but you know, you, you may want to be clear and being clear will help you prepare it. So yes, uh, you know, um, Coming there with the right attitude and energy is just how you're going to enjoy it. Because uh, being, being honest with people, God is a country that can get you very frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I have people we help move there and they tend to want to blame everything on me. Like it's my fault that the country is the way it is. I'm like, I'm my only goal is to get you connected and prepared and that you be clear about the world that you're getting into and things like that. And uh, right. yes, if you want modern convenience and you want something nicer, every country has those things to offer. Some countries have exquisite neighborhood that looks better than some of these uh, neighborhoods that we have here. Uh, I'm not trying to make a comparison because obviously this, you know, you know, you just have to this. It's based on what you're comparing it, but uh, whatever quality or whatever luxury that you want in Africa, you can have it. But don't expect to rent a hotel. Don't expect to rent an apartment and things for like a hundred dollars and so on, and think you're gonna get all of this fancy stuff and things like that in a rural area. Uh, so these are things that um, people just literally just need to be prepared for and things like that. And then recommend people just do more for group move because the country can, you know, uh, making certain moves in the country can eat your life. Uh, someone line is open. Someone have questions? Yeah. Is that you, Gail? Uh, yes. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, because you... Okay, Sister Kubi. Because uh, last year, you know, I was with you and then I stayed longer. You know that because I have some hookups. And then I told you I would see you May. And so you all saw me in May. So anybody going um, in July, more than likely, they'll see me in July because I'll be there in May. So normally when I'm there, I'm there at least two months. Excellent. And that's what we're talking about. Even when you traveled with me the, the first time last year, uh, May, uh, what you did, you stayed back longer. So I'm always just putting this out there in general to everyone. Uh, the journey may be too short or it may be too much going on and you may want to stay another few days or so. It's all up to you. Uh, it's more right. like for me to change tickets or make arrangements or work things out. Those things are simple, simple things to do. Uh, and also, and also in my case, you know, I have some projects going on too. So and that's the reason why also, because eventually, you know, we're making that move to stay. So I have several projects going on. Absolutely, you're gonna leave the boogie down Bronx to go to Ghana for real. Please. Serious? Please. I'm not from New York anyway, so it doesn't matter. Nothing's holding me back. <laughs> 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 this has been a making a lifetime. Yes, uh, Kobe, the journey for lifetime continues. That's right. Uh, family, the line is still open. And also Sian, let us know if you have anything else you'd like to share. Um and Mm, I can't think of anything else right now. My right. husband is sleeping. He's the one with a lot of questions. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, hopefully it wasn't too, you wasn't too shocked when we did those uh, ancestral celebration, whether it was at Cape Coast African Holocaust Dungeons or Asin Manso. Um, sometimes uh, people freak out about the stories and things, and sometimes it's, uh, it's uh, traumatizing when you hear certain stories based on the presentation. Not for me, because I'm from Jamaica, um, St. Mary's College and high school, I touched on a little bit of that. So I was always, I was prepared. I know some people, it's just really hard for them because I know a couple of people are crying. This is the first time for them. But for me, I was prepared for that because I got it in history class. So, you know, it's it was hard and it was good seeing it. 
you know, and experiencing it. And it was like, when I came back and I told my family, they were like, wow, you know, it's, it, you know, these people are so wicked, <laughs> you know, heartless. But, you know, we live and we learn, you know, but it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the history of it, you know, everything, the entire trip I did. Excellent. That's what I tell people what we have is a balanced experience, um, balanced experience. And that's how you're going to get a feel of the country. So tell people not to focus too much on the wrong thing and just enjoy the balanced experience. True. So yes, family, let's uh, see if anyone else would like to share some energy before the journey continues for the closeout on this conference call. My good brother, Dion, you have anything you want to share? Shelly, Gail, anyone? Eugenia? I don't have anything to share. I just know you do a good trip, and I'm be going on the Liberia trip with you. Absolutely, brother, absolutely. And then um, I'm going to be talking with my tour guide in Tanzania and let him know that uh, you know, you're the next group for next year because uh, we won't be in Tanzania next year. So that would definitely help them a lot. Um, you know, so we're gonna, you and I, yeah, will, tell, tell them we're coming through in June, so yeah, that'd through, be good. Coming through strong in June, Tanzania, yes, yeah, ready to do that full safari. Oh, yeah, we want to, yeah, yeah, so we can design it to where uh, usually we do one day out in the national park, um, Arusha National Park, uh, it's a one hour drive from Arusha, but I'll say, example, if you want to do um, this, uh, the Serengeti or something like that. You're gonna need about a good four days, so they can work that and then work, um, you know, work, you know, work other parts of the schedule. Like example, you can do that for four days, and you can spend four days on Zanzibar Island. Now you'd be missing out on Arusha and Dar es Salaam, but these are the things that you can arrange, and then you can just include all of them if you're willing to do a twelve-day journey. Things like that. So the flexibilities are incredible, and um, those are the things that we have. You know, it, uh, you know, there's the issues that you don't have a lot of people that's interested in certain things, so. You're limited on what you can really push. Uh, but uh, anyone that ever want to do anything customized, uh, we can create some incredible ventures, uh, especially right there in Tanzania. Okay, cool. Yes, sir, Kuvi, greetings. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Bomani, I'm looking for the trip to Egypt, the cruise down the aisle, the Nile. That'll be my fourth trip. But the first time, you, so I'm looking for that already. I'm already Absolutely. going to see it. So we're looking forward to getting your feedback on that, you know, because, you know, uh, sometimes people travel with other people, but I tell people that, you know, when you travel with us, it's a whole different world. You know, it's, um, you know, you know, you have a schedule. Uh, you don't have to do, like I tell people, you don't have to do the whole schedule, but um, trust me, it won't be a dull or boring moment. Yes, because I know a lot of people in Aswan, so I want to get back to that Aswan family I've known for three years. Absolutely. You know, you know how it is, Akubi, don't miss the boat, you know what I mean? That's right. You don't want the boat to leave you. Like I tell people, you know, when they're like, I left you, I was like, yo, I didn't leave you. I don't run the boat. I don't do any boat with us. You know, we're basically members and guests on the boat, just like you. So we have to follow the same rules and make sure that uh, we follow the boat schedules. Good you know, luck with that one. Well, you know, you know, just like the army, we leave no man behind. So we definitely got your back, you know, but, uh, you know, but we're not track stars and things like that. So. <laughs> uh, make sure that you know we just work those things out you know but you know usually we don't, we don't have, have an issue with that it's just the only thing is this that uh, that's the only thing i have to tell people as far as just the Nile valley journey is that we're doing a cruise ship and it's on their schedule other than that when we do our own stuff you know yeah. we'll make it work that's right good luck with that one yes yeah, so any other uh, thing you want to share um akuvi about your experience in egypt and uh, what people can look forward to, because uh, the schedule is similar, except, you know, we have a few more cooler things on there and uh, a few nicer resorts. Well, I thought it was nice when I was there. Um, they, You know, they still had the original Car um, Cairo Museum. And uh, we got a chance to see where they were constructing um, the new one. And I think the new one, if I'm not mistaken, should be fully completed. But I know it's tours when you can go into that one. That's supposed to be the largest museum. I don't think I don't I think it's the largest in the world. I don't large I think it's the largest in the world, if I'm not mistaken. But I know it's very huge. 
and but we were it wasn't um you know ready when we were there and then we saw um it was a um tony browder i don't know if people know him he he um it's um he has a big esca um what what you call it excavation yeah that's going on so we were able you know to go there and see the work that he's doing and he's the only basically african descended person that they allowed to do that so they have a big project with that and they have a like a, a plaque for Asa Hilliard. Anybody that know Asa Hilliard that passed away. And um just basically that, um, you know, the foods, you know, a lot of, you know, vegetarian food, you know, regular food, stuff like that, a lot of hummus and a lot of yogurts, stuff like that. The people were nice, the prices were pretty much good. And like I said, I like architecture and stuff. So that was fine. But my favorite of everything was um when we went to Aswan, because that's when we really saw us. Most of the areas you saw, you know, the Arabs. But when you go to Aswan, that's when, you know, you see, you know, our people. And it's a whole totally different vibe. And, it's, and to me, it seemed like the country is like it was back way, before, you know, like thousands of years ago. And it's like, not like it's modern. You would think it would be more modern, but not necessarily. And then Aswan is just totally different because it seems like the money that they put wherever they do in the country is like where we are you don't really see it but um the painting and the architecture the stuff that they have is really really fine so like i said uh aswan i love compared to like cairo and abu simba and other places aswan was just my thing the children especially excellent uh cool we appreciate the feedback on that one and um before we close, family, uh, does anyone else have anything to share before we um, close this out for the night? And as we're talking about family, this is our Africa Tours and Investment Conference call for all of our schedules uh, on our website at africaforafricans.org. So anyone who needs to contact me or reach out to me, they can text me, call me, uh, email me, and uh, I'm around to communicate. Uh, actively work throughout the entire week uh, throughout the day doing many different things uh, as far as this business and other things but uh, i keep myself flexible to where i can communicate with you and um, get everybody prepared so family if no one else have anything to share um, i'm going to close the conference call appreciate everyone joining and the journey continues Okay, it was great. Yes, it was great. And thank you. The family, Hi, as we close out, there's some beautiful photos of some of our previous tours. I was telling it was great. Yes, absolutely. Appreciate you joining. Mm -hmm. We'll be in touch. I'd absolutely um, I'll be on standby. Okay. The meeting was fantastic. Good night. I appreciate you joining us, Kubi. Thanks you for um, getting us some technical support on that microphone. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Talk to you later. Bye -bye. Uh, yeah, definitely.